Okay, this is part three of the book review of Digestive Tune-Up by Dr. John McDougall. And we're now going to talk about the stomach. Okay, we started with an intro, then the mouth. Now we're working our way down to the stomach. So here's the stomach and the abdomen. And when a person chronically is constipated at defecation because they don't eat enough fiber, because they eat a sad diet, standard American diet, a lot of meat, dairy, and whatnot, and lack of fiber in a typical Western diet, they're constipated. And they strain at defecation. And in so doing, they'll tend to put increased abdominal pressure upon their stomach and push it up towards the chest. Over time, that'll cause stretching of the diaphragm hiatus. That means the hole in the diaphragm through which the esophagus connects to the stomach. And as that diaphragmatic hiatus gets stretched, it can allow the part of the stomach, the top of the stomach, to pouch upward. When part of the stomach pouches upward above the diaphragm hiatus for the esophageal hiatus, you have what's called a hiatal hernia. And I see small ones all day. It's like like half of people have little small ones. They're very common in Westerners. And so when the stomach pouches above the diaphragmatic hiatus, the lower esophageal sphincter, abbreviated here LES, will often become a little bit incompetent. And what that does is it allows some stomach acid to go up into the esophagus a little bit. Reflux of stomach acid into the lower esophagus is called GERD, G-E-R-D gastroesophageal reflux disease. That acid rinsing up into the esophagus causes irritation and inflammation of the distal esophagus, and that's called Barrett's esophagus. Chronic inflammation over time, we spoke about this before, can lead to fibrosis, scarring, collagen, and then the collagen scarring fibrosis will uh, encapsulate some normal cells, and those can become you know, farther from the capillaries, less able to receive oxygen, so they receiving less oxygen, they become hypoxic. That's the word for decreased oxygen. Hypoxic tissue can sometimes transform, undergo what's called a, a Warburg effect, which means to change some cells from, first of all, being depleted of oxygen, a lot of cells will just die. Some of them will become dysfunctional, but they can also potentially revert to primitive metabolic pathways like run primarily on anaerobic glycolysis, glycolysis without oxygen. That's what cancer cells do. They'll take up 100 times more glucose because they're running on anaerobic glycolysis. Anaerobic means without oxygen. And the relevance of that is that's one of the ways you can get cancer. Okay, so abdominal pressure syndrome increases the risk of esophageal cancer, but it also releases the risk of, of discomfort. The sternum right here is also called the breastbone in the middle of the chest. Having pain right behind there, a burning pain, that's called heartburn. It's also called dyspepsia, and it's typically due to gastroesophageal reflux, typically associated with a hiatal hernia, typically due to a lack of dietary fiber, so the stomach pops up into the chest. Another thing characteristic of people who eat you know, a meat diet, sad diet, is they have an increased incidence of helicopylor, hel helicobacter pylori. Um, it's this little bacteria. It kind of almost looks a little bit like a helicopter, almost looks like a, you know, almost like a, ancient squid, but it's really tiny, microscopic, okay? These are flagella that help to propel it for movement. And it's able to sort of attach itself and hide in the stomach. And it increases the risk of forming stomach ulcers. Lots of people have this bacteria, Helicobacter pylori. Most of them are asymptomatic. It is, though, associated with increased risk of an ulceration of the stomach lining. The stomach produces this peptic um, acid, so an ulcer due to that is called peptic ulcer disease. Um, when you have a high meat diet and you're helicobacter pylori positive, you have an increased risk of getting an ulcer in this area. If you eat a low-fat, low-sodium vegan diet, your risk of helicobacter pylori decreases anyways. And they do sometimes treat it. People with uh, ulcers in this area, they'll treat them with a so-called triple theory like a bismuth anti-acid chemical and then two antibiotics, something like a tetracycline. Um, and a metronidazole, for example, but there can be side effects from those drugs. McDougall says you usually don't need the drugs. Usually you just eat low-fat vegan and you're going to be fine. He says if you take the drugs, what will happen is you'll minimize helicobacter pylori for a while, but if you keep on eating a lousy diet, it'll just come back anyways. Um, so we're going to talk about these a little bit, so I just wanted to give you a picture and a vocabulary, and then we'll get uh, more into the text of the book on these subjects. So first of all, we talked about dyspepsia, being in heartburn, the discomfort, pain, burning pain behind the sternum. GERD is the word. Gastroesophageal reflux disease. You get an ineffective LES, lower esophageal sphincter. That can lead to GERD. Inflammation of the esophagus, progress to Barrett's esophagus and cancer. And it's due to constipation, pushing the stomach upward. Okay, we talked about that. Abdominal pressure syndrome, as described by Dennis Burkett. Extra belly fat, being fat, the fat pushes back 
on the stomach, and that also can increase the tendency for gastroesophageal reflux. Um, if you wear really tight clothing, a real tight belt, it can tighten up your abdomen and increase the tendency to reflux. You don't want to lay down flat on your back right after eating a real big meal because you might be more likely to reflux. The best thing to do when you first eat a meal and then you want to go sleep is lay down on your right side because the stomach drains to the right. I've seen this hundreds of times because you know I used to have to do uh, upper GI barium swallow studies. You can just see the barium pours out of the right side of the stomach, goes right to your right abdomen. So you lay right side down, that facilitates it just dropping down and going off into the duodenum, the beginning of the small bowel. Um, let's see. So losing weight helps to decrease gastroesophageal reflux. Okay, laying right side down when you first go to sleep helps avoid gastroesophageal reflux. You can also, um, uh, let's see, you can also elevate the head of the bed a little bit. I don't like doing that, but some people could. Uh, let's see. Typically, the highly refined Western diet provides only about 12 grams of fiber per day. That's very little. Dennis Berger says we're, our ancestors probably ate 100 uh, grams or more of fiber per day. If you eat a starch-based diet, a McDougal diet with fruits, a little bit of fruits and vegetables, you'll be getting about 40 to 100 grams of fiber a day. That's more than enough, okay? Uh, dairy also paralyzes the bowel muscle, and that'll lead to constipation. So all these things that lead to constipation push you towards abdominal pressure syndrome. High-fat diet, we talked about that, is also associated with increased risk of heartburn. The fat, for uh, some reason, also causes more heartburn. It tends to peak three hours after a high-fat meal. Coffee will increase the risk of that, including decaf coffee. It's not just the caffeine, it's something in the coffee. Um, increases the risk of lower esophageal sphincter dysfunction and GERD. Cigarettes, alcohol, they also do it. Uncooked onions. Rashes, cucumber, radishes, cucumbers, green peppers will increase GERD. If you cook them, though, cook the onions and these other things, it, 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 it tends to not have that effect. Uh, chocolate increase causes lower esophageal sphincter dysfunction and GERD. It's likely worse with dark chocolate. Dark chocolate is 50% fat. I would never eat that. Uh, citrus fruits can also worsen this, including tomatoes. Also, spicy foods can worsen it. Um, GERD can cause poor dentition. You know, you get reflux in some of that acid if it goes all the way up to the mouth. Usually it doesn't go that high, but if it were to go all the way up to the mouth, it can cause uh, poor dentition. You know, that it's almost reminiscent of people doing it intentionally, like bulimia. They can get really bad teeth. Uh, reflux can also get acid uh, up into the larynx if you aspirate some of it, um, and that can cause laryngitis, a chronic cough. It can even increase the risk of asthma or sinusitis in kids. It can increase the risk of otitis media. Um, so you can stay upright for at least a couple hours after your last meal for the day. I just lay right side down because I have to eat. You know, I get home late from work sometimes. Sometimes I don't get home till 8 o'clock at night, eat a quick dinner, go to bed, <laughs> and I just lay down and go to sleep. I got to get up early in the morning again the next day. Uh, like they say, it's a lot better to be married to a doctor than be a doctor. Doctors are workaholics, even if they don't want to be. The system just puts them like on an assembly line to generate billing code, so they work a lot. Um, let's see. There's some meds that will increase GERD, you know, calcium channel blockers, morphine, beta blockers, progesterone. Uh, they can have side effects. Three major categories of GERD meds, gastroesophageal reflux disorder meds, are antiacids like Tums, Rolaids, Maalox. Uh, H2 blockers like cimetidine, ranitidine, famotidine, and proton pump inhibitors, PPIs. You know, all those meds can have pretty significant side effects. It's much better to fix your problems by optimizing your diet than to get into having to take all these pills. Um, it's not, peptic ulcer disease is not primarily caused by emotional distress or worrying. That's not the main issue. That was used to be the old teaching. Um, I remember that when I was a medical student. Uh, aspirin and NSAIDs will make things worse. Uh, spicy foods, we talked about that, but they have relatively minimal effect compared to these other things. Um, main digestive purpose of the stomach acid is to digest protein. High protein foods will cause increased gastric acid secretion. Um, beer and wine, especially amongst alcohol, will increase the risk of that. High fat foods will do it too, including olive oil and other vegetable fats. Um, in USA, about 25 to 50% of people have H. pylori, but again, most of them are asymptomatic. Um, if you start combining it with other risk factors, your risk of peptic ulcer disease goes way up. Um, broccoli, Brussels sprouts seem to have an antibiotic-like effect on H. pylori, so does cabbage also seems helpful. Low-fat plant diet significantly helps prevent peptic ulcer disease. So um, that's it for the stomach. I uh, hope that was helpful.